Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to our very first shader that we write together. This is part of the shader tutorial and today we're going to be doing something super simple. We're going to be blending a texture over time. But we're also going to be looking at other cool stuff, so just stay tuned for that. There is some very nice, um, very nice values we can use in that shader. So without further ado, I am going to get rid of this shader right here that I've made and we're going to rewrite it together. So as always, if you want to render something on the screen, you need a material. Right now our object doesn't have any material because I just deleted the last one and it was referencing to it. So I'll be going right here, create, and we're going to start today with a simple um, blending shader. So on the material, I'll just call this blending to texture, and then I'll create a unlit shader, which I'll also call blending to textures. I'll put an S to that, makes a little bit more sense. Now let's go ahead and drag and drop our material on top of our plane, or any object in this scene really. And this is now our plane, okay, and on it we have the standard shader. This is not what we want, but we still don't know where our new shader is stored. Let's double click on it and have a look what kind of default value they gave us. So by default, we're under unlit and blending to texture. Let's change that for N3K or, you know, whatever really. And this is going to be our blending to textures. Super simple. If you guys remember last episode, we went over the properties. This is actually defining a texture you can drag and drop. So if we go on number here real quick, find our shader. Here it is. If we open it up, we have the texture here, the main texture. It's right here. And the reason it appears, it is because it's under properties. For this, we're going to need two textures. So I'll duplicate this. And I'll actually call this one secondary text. So secondary texture. It is our second texture. Still of type 2D because we're working with a 2D image and by default it could be white. Okay, if we go back now, we now have two slots for texture. I'm going to choose something in my uh, in my folder. So I have this blue texture right here. It's basically just a grid. And then um, I could use the red one or I could use the lava like you saw in the preview. Really doesn't matter. All we're trying to do today is to blend them together. So just pick two texture and then you're going to realize that it doesn't work. Obviously we haven't told the shader to make it work yet. So if we go back real quick, if you followed last episode, every time we actually declare a property at the top here and we want to use it in our pass, we have to declare it again over here. So basically I put it in between the structure and also the vertex and fragment shader. Now if we just copy over what the main texture had, so sampler 2D, oops, Sampler 2D, here we go. This is going to be secondary texture. It has to match the same name, so this is actually quite important. It needs the same exact name, especially for texture because you can actually add some more parameter by adding a underscore ST at the end. The underscore ST is actually, and I figured it out uh, yesterday, I think, it's actually the tiling and the offset value here. So you have it in X, Y, Z, and that's W right here. All right, so now we've declared our texture in the properties it has another reference here in the pass. Do we go in the vert shader or the fragment shader? We don't go in the vert shader because this is to actually modify the, uh, the position of say every single vertex or something like that. We want to go inside of the fragment shader or the pixel shader because that's the one that's going to be putting color on top of our pixel. So since we're trying to blend two texture together, all we really have to modify is the color of the pixels. Now let's actually get rid of this part here, the fog, and let's have a look at this one right here. We declare a fix for, which is a vector for, and then we sample a pixel from the main texture at the position i.uv. So i.uv is basically just uh, the UV information you input in your 3D software. Today our goal is to actually have two colors, so sample from two and actually do a lerp in between. In fact, what we could do right here is to put this in between parentheses like this and actually type in lerp at the beginning. So like in Unity, the lerp function is going to take in three parameters. So the first parameter is the first texture, well actually the first color. The second one is, let's actually use the second color. So we're on secondary texture and we want to be sampling at the same UV, so i.uv. And then finally, right here is going to be a float in between 0 and 1 that is going to give you 
um, the ratio in between. So right now I put it on 0 0.5, so we should have half and half. Let's go and have a look. We have an issue. So what is our problem right here? Let's have a quick look. I actually forgot one set of parentheses right here, so let me just put that right there. Back in the game, we have a unexpected token return, so that's not cool. What's going on here? Oh, I forgot a semicolon. Okay, sure. We still do rookie mistake here. <laughs> All right, so we got a uh, we actually got this texture which is blending in between these two, but now it's kind of the same texture. It's hard to see, so I'll swap over to the Toon Lava. As you can tell, right now we have a blend of the two texture. Now, what if we could actually control this from the outside? That would be quite amazing. Well, let's go back and actually change this float right here by some kind of slider. If we head back at the top right here, we can declare, say, a lerp value. That would be the transition float. And we can put that in between uh, 0 and 1. So we'd have a range in between 0 and 1, and that's going to return us a float. You can also add a default. I'll just put mine on 0 0.5 again. So since we're declaring a property, we have to go down in the pass and actually match it like this. This is a simple float. It's not a vector or anything, so we just type in float and then lerp value. Let's copy this over to our 0 0.5, our hard-coded value we had. And now if we head into the game, we have our slider. We can play around with it. And as you can tell, we can get the full second color or the full first color. So this is actually how we do blending. Now, since this is a property on the shader, it's something you could be changing in the code. So from anywhere, really, if you just type down a C sharp script, call it test. I'm going to drag and drop the test, say, on the plane. Oops. You could technically just go in it, find that shader. So I'll just do a public material map, and then in a private void update, you could go right here, say mat set property, or actually is it set property? Let's do set float. So set float, the name, because you can use the name is underscore lerp value. And the value can be something like um, matf.sin, which is not going to be in the range because matf.sin actually goes up and down. So it goes up to one and down to minus one. So what's going to happen right now is the value, the lerp value, is actually going to go down to minus 1 and then go back up to 1. So if I save this and I start the game, technically we should see this being animated. And we don't right now. Let's see what's the problem. Oh, we don't have a reference on the material. Let's actually drag our material right into the test field. And let's see what happens. As you can tell, our value is actually being animated, and it goes down to minus one, so you get these kind of glitches here. While we're at it, just notice that as soon as you start going on the other direction in this lerp, because the lerp is not clamped, so it can go beyond uh, zero, and it can go beyond one. As soon as we enter the below zero, we have the secondary texture, but it's actually inverted. So that's something quite cool to know, could be useful later on. And let's actually have a look what happens if we go beyond that, if we go beyond 1. So what I'll do right here, I'll do a 1 plus matf.sin. So now our value are going to be in between 0 and 2. There we go, so value in between 0 and 2 now. That's quite interesting. We can see the color being a little bit more red. It kind of looks cool. Of course, it really depends on the texture you're using and also, you know, what kind of effect you're trying to achieve. I like that though, it's pretty cool. Now, what if we actually don't want to be using a C-sharp script? What if we just want to get, get rid of it totally, but we want this to be animated on its own? This is also possible because we get some awesome built-in values we can use. Let's actually drag this in here. And um, under, the, under the documentation, I know this is the version 4.6, but it basically works the same. If we go down right here, we have a bunch of actual float we can use. So this one is a float 4, float 4, float 4, until, yeah, they're all vector 4, basically. And they all work differently. So we could actually be using the same exact thing as we've done in C Sharp, but only using sin time. So I'll be taking this value right here. 
I'll go back in my shader and instead of using lerp value, I'll use sin time. Now I'll get rid of this and I'll also get rid of the property at the top. But is that going to work? Let's give it a try. Hmm, so it kind of works, but at the same time it gives us some really weird color. As you can tell, we're swapping from a huge range of color, which again, could be a very nice effect, but this is not what we're trying to achieve. So let's have a look at what is going on here. Right here, I'm actually using a vector 4, so that's definitely not something we want to be doing. We want to be using a single float value. Now, why is this a vector 4? This is actually a vector 4 because it's because it holds more than just the matf.sin. If we head over to the x value, this is actually 1 8 of a matf.sin. This one is actually 1 4th of a matf.sin. This one is half of it, and this one is like a normal sin. So what we could do is actually use this vector 3 and bind ourselves to the last value. Since this is a vector 4, we're going to be doing x, y, z, and w. If we want the last value, we can say sin.time.w. And it's actually going to give us the same effect we had earlier, so we're going to go down to minus 1. But as you can tell, it works on every second. If you want to make this go super slow, you can put it on X and it's going to be every one eighth of the second. So guys, that's it for the very first shader we write together. It's a really simple one, but I hope you picked up some tricks, maybe how to declare stuff at the top, maybe just some nice value you can actually use, some built-in values you can use. And uh, yes, yeah, so that's actually where I'm going to be ending today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.